Talk Business Arkansas is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Noble Strategies, the Arkansas Healthcare Association, and Delta Trust and Bank. I'm Roby Brock. Welcome to today's Talk Business Arkansas update. It was a busy day at the state capitol. We're going to start first, though, with some business headlines. Over 25 House and Senate members met yesterday at the state capitol to form the legislature's first aerospace and aviation caucus. The industry accounts for more than $1.8 billion in U.S. exports and 9,000 jobs in Arkansas. The caucus said it will aim to educate legislators and the public and highlight the aerospace, aviation and defense industries and their economic impact on Arkansas. Group also wants lawmakers to better understand the burdens and obstacles companies confront and how to make flying safer and more accessible. A bipartisan group of state lawmakers touted House Bill 1832, the Arkansas New Markets Job Act, a bill that could lead to significant investments in Arkansas. The bill encourages private sector investment in small businesses, particularly in low income regions by providing premium tax credits tied to private capital investments, including at existing businesses. The bill would authorize community development entities known as CDEs that would coordinate private investment and funding for qualified businesses. Under provisions of the bill, an Arkansas corporation limited liability company, association, partnership, or other business entity that agreed to retain or create jobs that pay an average wage of 115 percent of the federal poverty level would qualify for these tax credits for up to seven years. Businesses that derive revenue from retail sales or at least 15 percent of annual revenue from the rental or sale of real estate would not be qualified for the credits. Later in today's update, we'll sit down with one of the bill's co-sponsors, Representative Darren Williams, to learn more about the measure. Now, after this break and word from our sponsors, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the action at the Capitol today in committee. There was big controversy over the voter ID bill, but it now seems somewhat resolved. I'm Roby Brock. This is Talk Business. Well, I don't think it's going to be an easy conversation uh, because they are very strong willed. I think it's going to be important to us that we know that you're somewhere in a facility uh, that looks after you, has compassion, has care, and you respect it. I mean, I'd love to look after them, I'd love to be able to take care of them, but I don't think I could. That'd be a wrong choice on my part. Arkansas's skilled nursing and assisted living centers provide quality care for our seniors. Farm Bureau helps protect its members in more ways than you might think. They've always been the voice of agriculture in Arkansas, working on behalf of folks like me when nobody else would. And Farm Bureau stands for the values that Arkansas families care about. They've protected my right to farm and make a living, which helps everybody who likes food on the table. You know what they say, Arkansas counts on agriculture, and agriculture counts on Farm Bureau. The Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas the State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the State Capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. In politics, there was a lot of action at the Capitol today as the voter ID bill seemed to take front and center. At a noontime meeting, the Senate Rules Committee met to discuss whether or not the voter ID bill, Senate Bill 2, needed a two-thirds supermajority in order to pass that chamber. The constitutionality of that vote has come under question from some of the critics of the bill. The Senate Rules Committee ruled 8-6 to six that it did need a two-thirds supermajority. This afternoon, the full Senate as a whole took up the measure and decided that they would not abide by the Rules Committee ruling. And the bill went on to pass by a 22-12 to 12 margin. Only one Democrat, Senator Larry Teague, voted for the measure. It now goes to the governor for veto or for signature. Arkansas Medicaid officials say that a state plan to move Medicaid-eligible low-income citizens into a private option that would include 
Subsidized plans and forthcoming health insurance exchanges could add less than 15% to costs. It could also result in negligible additional expenses when combined with other factors. A Department of Human Services report said that the estimates find that the private option can be fully funded with existing resources at the state level and would add less than 15% to federal health care costs in Arkansas. Quote, in some realistic scenarios, there could be no additional federal costs at all. And that development certainly brings the legislature closer to the supermajority vote needed to pass the appropriation bill to make that Medicaid private option a possibility. We'll see how that happens. After this word from our sponsors, I'll sit down with Representative Darren Williams. He's a co-sponsor on a new bipartisan bill to create jobs. More after the break. Noble Strategies is a bipartisan state and federal government affairs firm with a successful track record of providing effective advocacy for business, government, and nonprofit entities. Noble Strategies provides service in areas such as lobbying, public affairs, trade association management, and marketing campaigns. Learn more at noblestrat.com. I was looking for a bank that could best protect my finances. It shared my passion for my business's potential. A bank that offered investment expertise. Linden support. Insurance guidance. A bank that delivered full financial support. That's how I found True Balance. True Balance. From my bank. From my bank. Delta Trust and Bank, the expertise to meet all your financial needs. One of the real advantages of Electric Cooperative's membership is having a voice in our state's energy future. Not a week goes by without important energy issues making headlines. These are issues that need to be discussed. And you should know that as policies are being developed, the cooperatives are looking out for our members, advocating what's best for you. We are your friends and neighbors. We are your local electric company. The Electric Cooperatives. We are, we are Arkansas. Joining me now is State Representative Darren Williams, Democrat from Little Rock. He's one of the co-sponsors of some bipartisan legislation to imagine this potentially create jobs in Arkansas. This is something uh, this legislature has got a little bit of a rap about not spending enough time and focus on is jobs. Tell me about this New Markets Jobs Act. Well, first of all, you're exactly right. This legislature, we've done quite a few things. Um, not all of them, what I say, would be um, uh, in the direction of creating jobs. Uh, this bill, the New Market Jobs Act of 2013, is what I'm calling the bipartisan jobs bill uh, of this 89th General Assembly. Uh, probably every legislator out, legislator out here campaigned on creating jobs. They're going to create jobs. Well, this bill that Senator Dismang and I are, are carrying, uh, we believe this is the tool uh, that will allow uh, them to satisfy their campaign promises. Uh, Give me the structure of how sure. it works. It's a little bit confusing. It involves premium tax credits. Uh, there's a, apparently a multi-state kind of market for some sure. of this. Sure. The, the New Market Jobs Act, the state act, is really modeled or piggybacked off the federal New Markets Act. Uh, in 2000, Congress passed a federal New Markets Act uh, to try to uh, spur investment uh, of capital into low-income communities. So th the purpose is the same. Uh, this is geared toward trying to create jobs in low-income communities. And what we do is a community development entity, uh, for lack of better terms, almost like a venture capital fund, uh, they receive an allocation of tax credits. Uh, these tax credits are on the premium insurance taxes. So every insurance company, every policy that's sold uh, in the state, there's an insurance premium tax. Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, tax credit uh, will, will be sold to these insurance companies. They have regular and reliable um, revenue. And so they're, this, this uh, uh, tax credit is pretty attractive to them, usually about 70, 75 cents on a dollar. Uh, and so they will buy those tax credits to fund these, these CDEs or community development entities. Uh, these CDEs will raise additional capital uh, to create their fund. Uh, once they have their fund, then they'll take that money and invest in qualifying businesses in qualifying communities. Um, and this is really money used to really target uh, expanding existing businesses. We got a lot of programs in state government to uh, attract new business. This can be used for new business, but it really is kind of geared toward that growth capital uh, that, that businesses often need. So give me an example. I'm a, let's say I'm a manufacturer in Mariana, Arkansas. Right. I employ, you know, 50 people and I'm looking to do an expansion. How would I approach the CDE to 
tap into that potential venture capital? Well, this, this CDE acts like a traditional lender. Uh, you will approach them with your deal, explain the, the, the deal, your need for financing. Oftentimes, this is gap financing, so you may have some traditional financing, uh, but you're a little short to make the deal work. So you go to the CDE, or the CDE may approach you because they have to be aggressive. Uh, they've got to invest 100% of their allocation in the first 12 months. Uh, then they have to invest 150% over seven years. So we're building a fund of $166 million in allocation, which is going to pre create or produce $250 million uh, in investments because they'll have to invest 150% uh, of their allocation. So you approach that, that lender or that, uh, that, that community uh, economic development uh, uh, fund and explain your deal, and they make the investment. If it's a good deal. If it's a good deal. If it's got to satisfy certain requirements. And here's an important requirement that really the governor's office has helped us. We're still crafting this bill, but the, the jobs that are created from this bill, the investments that are made, the jobs have to pay 115% above the average state wage. Uh, so that's, that, those are real jobs. Those are good jobs. Uh, so where do you see some potential obstacles here? You mentioned that the governor's office has worked with you guys to kind of craft this bill sure. a little bit. Uh, AEDC chief uh, Grant Tenniel was at today's right. uh, press conference earlier talking about this. He said support the concept, still right. want to make sure that there's a good right. return on the investment. Right. For the state of Arkansas, and, and we're still we're working. We're and this is a, this is a process. This is how you know bills are 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 are, are passed here. There's give and take, uh, and we want to make sure that that we have significant clawbacks, or or if the if the if the community economic development uh, fund doesn't do what it's supposed to do, that we can claw back those tax credits. Uh, we want to make sure that it creates the right type of jobs, meaning jobs that pay really good wages. Uh, and so we're going to continue to work with the governor's office uh, to make sure that we can afford this. I think that's. The, uh, that's the concept that the governor's office is most concerned about, making sure that this fits within the entire budget uh, for this session. Critics are going to say this is just another corporate welfare program, another way to help businesses with a tax break that gives them some unfair treatment. How do you respond to those critics? Well, what I would say to those critics is this is really driving private investment. Um, this is driving private investment into jobs that will pay good wage and you look at uh, states around us that have done this about 11 states have uh, implemented a state uh, new markets tax credit program Florida for example that program created 4,000 jobs since inception uh, those jobs pay an average wage of about forty seven thousand uh, dollars Missouri uh, since they've had their program this is their second round of funding on their program uh, it's created 3,700 jobs for every one dollar in tax incentive that was invested uh, the state of, of Missouri has created one dollar and fifty three cents in revenue uh, so this will be important revenue positive from day one because the tax incentives that are given to these businesses can't be used until the third year so remember the fund has to invest all of its money uh, hundred percent of its money the first year so they have two years where there's no impact to our budget by the time the third year comes around you've got that money has been invested now for uh, three years so you'll start seeing revenue uh, when, when those when those incentives start to hit and those credits start to hit. From wages, from tax collections. From wages, collections. from tax collections, mm -hmm. from all this. Yes, sir. So um, does this not escalate the arms race in tax incentive programs? Are, are we doing this to keep up with the Joneses, or are we doing this um, because it, it, we have to? Well, th th we're doing this because it's proven to work in other states. Uh, and, and it works also because it piggybacks on the federal program, and you're going to attract not only the state tax credits, you're going to also attract the federal tax credits. So the, these, these, these uh, community development entities that really run these programs, a lot of them also have federal allocations. So you're going to see uh, this program creating jobs and bringing federal tax credit money to the state of Arkansas. And that working capital is what our businesses really need to expand. All right. He's Representative Darren Williams, Democrat from Little Rock, co-sponsor of some bipartisan jobs legislation. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll talk about some other session issues down the road. Sure. You still Look got a few more weeks, it looks we've, like. We've so. got a few more. We've got big Medicaid and Big Rivers Big Steel. Real quick, steel. before I pitch out here, are you satisfied with the direction things are moving on the Medicaid slash private option debate? Well, we're moving in the right direction. It's very important to me that we pass um, a last legislation that will really solve this problem of uh, providing affordable care to these folks who are uninsured. Uh, and we're moving in that direction. Uh, the federal government gave us a tremendous benefit by giving us flexibility to move people to private insurance. Many of my Republican colleagues like that 
program or that direction, uh, even though it costs us much more money, they like that. But um, we're moving in the right direction. I think we'll get there. All right. Representative Darren Williams, thanks again. Thank you. I'm Ruby Rock. You can check out tomorrow's Talk Business Arkansas update right here. Talk Business Arkansas is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Noble Strategies, the Arkansas Healthcare Association, and Delta Trust and Bank.